welcome to us to G360. I'm your host, Dilbar Shatterson. While many of the world's religions share many of their core principles in common, there's one particular practice that's observed by many of them in some form, and you might be surprised to find that it's fasting. It's defined as a conscious choice to abstain from eating, and in some cases drinking, for a prolonged period of time. And this July, the Islamic calendar tells us that it's the ninth month, Ramadan, which is here to test and encourage Muslims around the world to participate in the fast for roughly 30 days. For Muslims, this means no eating or drinking from dawn till sunset, which this year measures over 16 hours in the summer heat. So why practice such intense hardship and restraint, and across any faith for that matter? As per Dr. Bill Bright, he suggests that this process can help you take inventory of your spiritual condition and can help transform your life. Now let's visit a group of young Muslims who have found this inspiration from Ramadan and are working hard to transform their communities, one grain of rice at a time. Rice Grains is a nonprofit organization founded about three years ago by several of my friends. They started in Ramadan three years ago. They realized as they were hungry, there were probably other people that were hungry all the time. So feeling that connection, they went out and bought some food for anybody they saw in the street who appeared homeless, who was asking for money. And then we decided to continue it month after month and eventually it organized into this organization we have today where we do that almost every other week. Today we are preparing iftar for Masjid al-Hikmah. We're going to make 25 boxes of food, and we're going to go to Masjid al and we're going to give them out. Our connection to Masjid al is that the parents for more than half the members pray at Masjid al and so they just happen to hang out there and then decide to talk among themselves and meet and figure out plans to go forward with rice grains while their parents have taken them there. I found that iftar boxes in Ramadan more or less have the same kind of food every single time. Today is really going to switch it up, and I'm really excited to see the reaction. We are making rice, a soba, a spinach, and tomatoes, and some eggs. It is pretty hot in this kitchen. I get up at 3. We started fasting at 3.50 a.m. When the sun sets, is 8.30. So we have a 16-hour fast. Um, we're trying to basically wrap liquid in plastic wrap. Can you close this? It, it worked. It's hard to do it, but it worked. Morning, Gary. It's a, it's a rice bowl. This is the seasoning. Seasoning. It's to make onigiri. If you flip it between your hands like this, it'll start to take shape. I am 29. Most of the people in rice grains who are the active are between the ages of 16 and 22. They have energy. These kids, they keep me motivated. It catalyzes other interests and other activities that we otherwise wouldn't be doing. And I think it's really amazing that at this point in their lives, they could do something they feel is meaningful. You look really good. I'm holding my desire right now. <laughs> I'm really hungry. The main reason we like rice grains is that it's so local and hands-on and grassroots that you are really involved in every stage of the process. So. I believe that gives them a better sense of what they're doing. Well, I'm really excited to make my fast. I'm just ready to eat. This month is Ramadan. I feel more connected to the broader humanity during this particular month. At this point, I could feel thirsty, hungry. That makes me feel connected with just about every single person I pass by on the street. This is temporary for me, but not for other people. We are going to the masjid. Are you guys in? Mark Du is a good friend of mine. He came to the masjid before, and he learned Islam uh, very quickly. And I saw a lot of youth here, a gathering, and they're walking together. We will involve them in the masjid. Uh, we want to work with them so they can create some kind of activity for the youth here. The rice and the pasta, they were really delicious. They had like some, uh, I guess, the spinach taste. Uh, and it was really, really worth uh, breaking my fast with the dinner box. And I really appreciate it, it was delicious. They were like some different kind of food. I never had that before, but actually it was pretty good. I like it. It feels nice that we work so hard and they also appreciate our hard work. Yeah. 
Thanks. Yeah, the next manhunt, we're just going to get make sandwiches and find people who are homeless, find people who are asking for money, and give it to them. I don't think I'll be there for prep, just because I'd probably still be at work at that point in time. You will see me at the manhunt. We're going um, to a distribution, and we're going to go around distributing food to people who look like they might need it. We don't want like food to be all mismatched all together like that. So we want it, we want to like provide these people with food that we carefully made with our own hands. So we got cheese, we got romaine hearts, which is a type of um, lettuce, I assume. One or two. Anytime we use the mustard, we always have to clean up after ourselves, and sometimes clean up after others too. The whole thing today costs like two hundred and 50, we pack like 10 sandwiches. And usually what we do is we ask around um, our mushid to donate money to us to provide funds. Um, we also have frequent donators, not only through money, but like they donate supplies, so it's like food. And then we've also had people donate like kitchen utensils as well. One of the new things that we've done today is that we're implementing this sanitation slash homeless kit. And basically it's gonna consist of like a toothpaste, toothbrush, hand sanitizer, you know, all the stuff that every a person might need in their everyday lives. This is the first manhunt event of this particular month, which is in Islam, the most important month of the year. And so doing these kind of like charitable acts during Ramadan is really good for us. Right now, I guess we're gonna go pray first. And then afterwards, we're gonna go head over to Jackson Heights and search for some people on the streets. Uh, generally, we look for people who look like they're homeless, and hopefully we'll be able to um, meet our quota today, which is 10 people. Sometimes we have trouble finding people. It a lot of times depends on the time of the day we're doing it, or the season. We'll have the manhunt six times this summer, probably twice a month for all three months of the summer. It doesn't feel like you're fasting when you're carrying food for a people, because you realize people on the receiving it are probably hungrier than you, so it feels like you're not fasting at all. We're an organization called Rice Grains. We live in Elmer's and Jackson Heights around here. Every week, we just go around giving people, the, giving food to anybody who looks like they might be hungry. And we're wondering if you'd like some food too. I can eat this in the night, and thank you. So we're gonna give you water and sandwich banana pudding in a spoon. Thank you, girl. Hello. I'll be honest, I almost cried like a few times. Part of the reason why I joined Rice Greens was because like, you know, I wanted to be part of the bigger picture and serve the community as a whole as, uh, as best as I can, you know, most positive way. Right now I'm fasting and I'm worried about not eating and I, I don't like, you know, think about other people who doesn't have food at all like, every day. Knowing that we're doing this for a good cause and knowing that ultimately the person getting it will be happy, that's enough for us. I think everybody should experience doing a manhunt at least sometime in their life because that really will change your life when you really stop and speak to somebody that you would normally pass by or, or look away from. Now we're back here at Masjid Al Hikmah in Long Island City, Queens, and I have the great pleasure of being joined by Imam Muhammad Shamsi Ali. Thank you very much for joining Thank us. Thank you for having me. Thank you very much. What is the significance of Ramadan in the Islamic calendar? The Ramadan basically is the ninth month of the Islamic lunar calendar, and uh, it is the fasting month for the Muslims. To fast means to abstain from food and drink, and all things that may consider displeasure of God the Almighty. 
So anything that might consider sins, we must abstain from it. And this month is very essential in our faith because this is the month that we consider the month of reflection, the month that we reflect that we are all weak, we are all humbled, and uh, we have our Almighty God, and we must return to Him. The food and the drink and everything that He gave us in life is blessings, and we must appreciate Him. But I think most importantly for the Muslim is the month to reflect and to bring self-transformations and try to change ourselves to be better persons. So how can this transformation be achieved by the act of fasting, for example, which is paramount to Ramadan? The essence of fasting is to restrain, to control, to have self-control. You know, as human beings, we have a lot of desires, for example, and sometimes there is no end. This is the month that we train ourselves to have control of our desire and not to be controlled by desire. So with the self-control, what are the biggest internal challenges faced then? Challenge is not about abstaining from food and drink because we can abstain from food for many hours. But I think the most challenging part of fasting is about truly challenging your own internal desire, your internal ego. And Islam teaches us that riches are not about how much you have in your hands. Being rich is about how do you feel that self-satisfaction. So I think it's very important that when we do fasting, it is about truly a training for us. Being a practicing Muslim in a place like New York City, mm -hmm. um, what would you say are some of the biggest advantages, but also disadvantages? I have lived in several countries, Muslim countries, but I have to be honest, that I feel that I have more freedom to practice my religion here in the United States of America. The Constitution of the United States of America does not only give us an opportunity, but it guarantees and protects our right to practice the religion. Secondly, uh, American people are so open. You know, everybody has the right to do here in this country as long as you don't bother anybody. You don't annoy anybody around you. Uh, and sometimes you don't have that kind of freedom anywhere else in the world. But the challenges, I think, is being a minority. Also, I have to acknowledge that it is truly difficult sometimes to have that confidence in having my own identity as a Muslim, especially about the kids, that they might be taken away in terms of Islamic identity. And for example, in New York here, mm -hmm. there's so much diversity. Sure. So how is a practicing Muslim during Ramadan to navigate those social situations where they're with you know, other people that won't be fasting? Certainly, uh, that itself is, is uh, very challenging. Uh, early in the morning, we have to wake up eating our sahur or morning meal. It's around 3.30 in the morning. And afterward, we have to wait until the morning prayer around 4 o'clock, so 4.30. And oftentimes, we don't sleep uh, after that, and we have to go to the work. And at lunch hour, you see your friends uh, eating ice cream or eating lunch, and you're fasting. You're already tempted at that moment. But God promised that the more you are challenged and the successful you are in facing those challenges, the more you are rewarded. That's really a suggestion, it's really a motivation for us to win over all these kind of desires. And so Muslims living in the United States, for America for example, especially in the summer times, long days, hot season, we're still doing it. Of course, I have to acknowledge it is challenging, but we can overcome it because of that belief in God's blessings and reward. Thank you very much, Imam, for joining us, and I hope you certainly do win this Ramadan. Oh, I thank you very much, and uh, I will do try my best. Um, I think by prayer, God will help us, and also trying our best. Surely, and thank you. Thank you very much. And now let's meet a family who's working hard to achieve their goals this Ramadan, both spiritual and academic. Take some of this. Now it's this good. One, two, three. Yeah, this is, we are picking collard green, and these girls have helped me plant these. And this is, we will be getting some scallions also today. The joyous time is, is the time when you break the fast, because at that time you are thirsty, you are hungry, and, and if especially it is very hot, then it is very exciting. I'll give it to my wife, she will cook it, and then we will eat it. Come on, boy. My name is Farah, Farah Siar, and I have five kids. 2007, I came from Pakistan. Actually, my husband got a scholarship 
So he came before us in July, and after that, I came in December 20th. And first we came here, my husband, he's living with his friend. Then after then, we moved to other houses, and then but my husband is working. I was around 12 years old when we came, and where I started school literally a week after I came here. It was a pretty easy transaction. We don't have that much energy every day, fasting, fasting. The first two, three days are good. Like after 10 or 15 Ramadan, that's it's a little bit harder. When I go out, sometimes go to city with my kids, I have some work. That day, it's hard. When I was growing up in Pakistan as a kid, Ramadan used to be in November. So the days were very short, it was cold. Now that they're moving up every 10 days, you know, it's getting hot, they're all in the summer. And you know, when someone offers you something, you have to explain the whole thing. So there's that struggle that you are constantly socializing with people, you're constantly watching people drink and eat. Whenever my mom's cooking, I wonder how she can resist it, but she always does, and the outcome is amazing food. I try to like read books, sometimes I study, try to pass the time without talking too much, because then my mouth feels really dry. The usually the other days, I can taste, but now I can just uh, remember, just put a little bit of salt and the other things. Ramadan, I feel like for me especially, it's such a transforming month. You get so in tune with God, you're hungry and thirsty. That in a way makes me pray better for some reason. In your mind, you're like, you know, I'm following everything that he asked me to. For me, it's faith. We just got here from home. We're at the mosque in Staten Island, and we're going to pray Esther today. Where I grew up in Pakistan, everything is according to you know, the Muslim law. I think here in the U.S. it's much more difficult because I'm socializing with people who aren't Muslim almost the whole day. And when it comes time to pray and when it comes time to fast, it's hard because, you know, then you have to explain everything. And I think being here has brought me closer to Islam because it's much more personal. I make the decisions. I decide, yeah, this is the religion I want. I choose to cover my head. I choose to fast. I'm making kale, uh, spinach, and rice. Three cups of rice. Onion leaves, green onions, and parsley from our backyard. It's a kale. Kale is a spinach kind of. My husband likes it, I like it. And uh, they're fresh. We're waiting for Iftar, and that's at 8.30, so then we can finally break our fast. Yeah, it was a long day. I had to go to the city today during the afternoon, so it was really hot, but when I got the water, it felt really good. We're just, we've been hungry for like 14 hours almost, so we're just rushing to eat because we're so hungry and also because we have to pray in like half an hour, so we're trying to finish up quickly. I go to the College of Staten Island. Right now I'm on the pre-med track, I want to be a doctor, and I'm majoring in biochemistry. Now I'm just going to prepare some breakfast. My mom usually wakes us up at like around 3.30. There's going to be tuition, it's not going to be like high school, so let me, you know, apply to scholarships yes. just so I wouldn't have to worry about paying that much. I was an international student, and being that, you're not really eligible to apply for a lot of scholarships. So there were very few that I could apply to, and the Zuchi scholarship was one of them. And, you know, luckily I was selected as one of the college recipients. Tired, sleepy, not wanting to eat, but I would rather eat than not compared to, I know what's going to happen tomorrow, so. This is my first time meeting PowerShell's parents in their house. I get to know more of their daily life this time. I can see how tough the condition is with seven people living in a small space. It's really not easy. 
We will discuss after the visit today and see how we can help them financially. Hello, Paosha. Good afternoon. How are you doing? Good, great. <laughs> uh, how are you doing, everyone? Hello, girls. Mrs. Oh, okay. Harris, okay. nice to meet you. Hello. When I went for the scholarship ceremony, I talked with Mrs. Chang and she said, your income is low, we would like to help you. So I came home and discussed it with my parents and they said, we'll appreciate any help we can get. So then I contacted her through email. That's how it was arranged. I love talking to Mrs. Chang and her husband. And it was nice discussing our situation with them. They were so understanding. We could tell them anything. They are very good people. Hopefully within a week we will receive, they will come with the checks. So that will be a good addition to the income to fulfill our expenses. During the Hurricane Sandy midterm relief in May 2013, we had a distribution in Shaw from Y Brooklyn. My daughter Paula, she, she got a scholarship and they need a translator for the Urdu language. Then they asked me if you can come with uh, Paula. Asha. I meet new families and I listen their stories. So it's good. I wish I can do it again. <laughs> yeah, and I want to do it again. Both of them help us a lot. I was very touched. Just going to that event, hearing their stories, it was a very nice event. It was a very enlightening event. Hao is a very hardworking, kind, and passionate kid because she has been participated in a lot of volunteer work since her high school time. She is studying biomedical now, and I know she wanted to be a doctor. I'm sure she will be a kind and passionate doctor in the future. I got this at the scholarship ceremony, and knowing that all the scholarship money I get is donations, I would love to help out any other students. Sijie Foundation awards scholarships to outstanding high school seniors. This is a nationwide program that has been held for 22 years. This is my second year. I received it last year as a high school student when I was selected for the scholarship. It was really nice. It meant a lot because this is exactly the kind of organization that I've been thinking about, you know, someone that gives back. And I've been really impressed ever since. And I volunteered with them on a couple of occasions. I'm just glad that I've gotten to know them through these two years. <laughs> While Pawasha and her family are steadily sailing through Ramadan, in the importance of charity or zakat, which is one of the biggest ideas that the month seeks to stress. Sure, it's a concept that's emphasized during this time, but how can we ensure that compassionate giving continues throughout the rest of the year? The Muslim scholar Ibn Rajab stated that those acts that were performed during Ramadan do not end at the conclusion of Ramadan. Rather, these actions continue as one has life. So as we take today's stories as our cue, we encourage you to keep compassion in mind, and not just this month, but every month. And in fact, he also says that the righteous actions of a believer do not end until the end befalls him, with which I think every Tsuji volunteer would absolutely agree. Thanks for joining me this time. I'm Dilbar Shatterson. Happy Ramadan, and I'll see you soon.